Hello there, and welcome back to the mountainous redstone world that is the Bedrock Edition world update, gradually expanding redstone extravaganza I've got going on here. And today we're here with another trapdoor, which is a door that's a trap and drops you in the floor. Trapdoor. So I pull this lever and fall to my death. My favourite activity. But this is 5x5. Five five. Before that we built a 4x4, four four. before that we built a 3x3, three three. so we've gone from here to here to here. But we'd have to be a mad lad to go any further, I mean 6x6, six six, that's impossible. They'd never let us get away with that, but we did. Yeah, we placed a block, one block next to the other blocks. And now we've got this. This is... it kind of looks small compared to the 5x5 five five mess over here. This isn't it, this is the 5x5 five five one. I'm a professional. It looks the same size as the 5x5 five because five, it is the 5x5. Five five. Amazing. Yeah, the 6x6 six six one is actually over here. Okay, there we go. So the redstone on this doesn't actually look that big. I mean, there's a stupid amount of repeaters. <laughs> like, I will give you that. I probably could have done the repeaters in a smarter way. Yeah, like actually here, I could have switched this repeater for a block, taken the redstone to the side and then made it go to that one. But then this repeater wouldn't have something. Whatever. This is how I built it. It's a nice pattern when you close it in, goes like that. It's very quick for the size it is. And the walls, because the 5x5 five five one, which is over here, had such janky walls when you opened it like these. Look how far this goes in, it goes like two blocks in. I wanted to make it better than this one. There's also one corner of this where like there's exposed redstone. So I tried to avoid that. And luckily I did. You only have this sort of going in one block on each side. And then when we close it, just comes in like that. So the main thing that makes these trapdoors that are done with honey and slime be good or bad is the pattern that you use underneath for honey and slime to make everything pull back to the right place. So this one, I did this. I have just realized this looks kind of like a symbol that's not very good, but you know, that's, that's what it ended up as. Look. This, this was not on purpose. It's just mathematically convenient for building piston doors. Ay ay ay. I wish I noticed that before. But anyway, this is how I had to do it. So anyway, now we've got a, you know, not suspicious looking symbol at all to make the door fold away. That's what it, that's what it looks like. And then when we flick the sleever, it goes away like that. Look, that's why. It's because then these bits fold away here, which puts the middle blocks in nice. These bits fold here. And then we put them back and we had to alternate between slime and honey based on where it was and it ended up looking like this and oh my god. <laughs> please, <laughs> please ignore what this looks like. Okay, so how do you build this? So to build this you're going to need 20 sticky pistons, 39 redstone dust, 38 redstone repeaters, 28 obsidian, 18 honey blocks and 18 slime blocks. To build it you're going to need this 12 by 16 area and your door is the 6 blocks in the middle. We also need three blocks vertical space for the, all the redstone for the door. And then where the blocks actually come out is the block above that. So the blocks are going to be on top of your honey blocks here. So what we're going to do is if we go to middle and look at one of the longer sides on the block next to the center. So here we're going to go three blocks up. And the third block up is going to be slime on one side and honey on the other side. And then we're going to come out in this owl shape going to the corners of the door like this. Then we copy that on the other side, except we do the opposite. So the side that was honey before is now slime in an L shape. And then the side that was slime is now honey. So we got that. Then next to the L shaped slime, we do honey like this. So we do that on both sides. So middle block, go back and fill in this gap here. And then the other one, we're doing slime blocks like this. So this is your shape you should have. So you've kind of got these thumbs up made of honey and slime aiming at the shorter sides. And along the longer side, we've got these L shapes. So for pistons, we're going to do the size differently. So if I call me looking at the wall, this is going to be where we're going to do everything relative to. So on the right side, I'm going to do a piston three blocks backwards. So right at the edge, aiming at the corner of this slime. Then I'm going to go two blocks across and one block forward and do another piston aiming forward like that. And that's because when they extend, they'll grab this slime here. For the honey at the back on the right side, we go to the second block along here and we go two blocks back. And at the same level, we do a sticky piston aiming at it. So it's just a block in front of it. 
And then we do diagonally behind that, another one aiming at the honey like that. So that's two blocks between it and the honey. Now the left side we do differently. So if we go to the left side, the honey blocks, we leave one block of gap and then do a sticky piston and then leave two blocks back and do one next to it. So two blocks space between that one, one block between that one. And then we copy this to the other corner, the back left. So one block of space for the one at the edge and then two blocks for the one close to the middle. So we got that shape. So the other sides are just a mirror of each other. So what we do is we do our piston one block back at the edge of these thumbs up here. So these pistons are in this position with one block, one block in front of them. But then behind those, we do two pistons like this facing each other. So two blocks between them in the middle. And then we copy this to the other side. So at the back, we have this shape going again. So that's our piston layout. Okay, so our input is on the right side and in the middle. And what we're going to do is under these two pistons that are further forward, we place obsidian blocks, then a normal block between them with redstone on it. And then behind that, there's going to be a block and this block is your input. So you take a repeater, can't be a redstone, it has to be a repeater or a torch going into that block from underneath. And you'd power your door by powering that. Like you can see, it pushes out these two pistons. So that's where our input is. Then coming to the right side, we do a redstone and a repeater on three ticks of delay. That goes into a block and into a redstone. And that means that this piston will turn off after this one. So this one will pull these honey blocks back and this one will pull everything back. And same for the other side, except we have to go two blocks across. So we do. We do two redstone dust and a repeater on three ticks going into the block with the redstone next to the piston. So this bit is more complicated because we can't just pull this piston back and then these ones. Okay, so I did make a mistake with the pistons. These back ones out of the double extenders should be a block further back. So there should be a gap between them like this. And same for this side. So they should be on the edge of the area the door is built on. Oops. Okay, now back to the front of our door. So coming to the left of our input, we're going to do two blocks like this and then three like this. And these all have redstone on them. And then we've finally got these two here with some more redstone on them. Now between these two pistons at the front, we're going to place obsidian and we're going to do two blocks underneath them with redstone between just to pass the signal. Then under these second set of pistons, there's going to be obsidian under both those. And that's because the slime on the honey is going to pass over it. So if we put blocks under them to power them, it has to be obsidian. And now we just need to place a butt ton of repeaters. So we also have blocks behind these obsidian blocks under those pistons. And then we fill in all of these blocks on the floor because we're going to cover them in repeaters. So you need to pay attention to what setting these are on. So the first one here is on its default. Then we have one next to it that's on its full delay. So you click it right to the end and then one in front on its default. Then next to those ones, we have three and these are all set to their full delay. So the stick should be at the end. And then we do the same next to those, except the last one is on its default. So that's what we're doing. I mean, it doesn't really matter which ones of these are full and which ones are on the default, as long as they're the right number. So you need two that are full and one on its default. And here we need all of them full. And here we need one full and one on its default. And then one on its default here. And the ones in the middle are just left as is. And we also copy this on the other side. So we've got our redstone in this shape. Then the two extra sticking back towards the input. Then we put the obsidian next to those two pistons with the blocks between them. And the repeaters aiming away from the input. Then we do the obsidian blocks under these front two. Then normal blocks behind those like that. And then we fill in all the blocks. And then we do default, four ticks, default, then all on full, and then all on full except for one. So that's half of the door done. So moving on to the other side where these two repeaters aim, do a block with a redstone dust, 
Then we go one block to the side, we go two blocks backwards and two blocks across to the edge and redstone on all of that. And then we fill in the rest of the floor with blocks leading up to these pistons. Our repeaters on this side are a bit different because they're two less. So the first one is just one repeater on three ticks. The next set is two on full and then one on two. And then the next one is a repeater on three ticks of delay going into a block, going into a repeater on four ticks of delay like that. So make sure you've got all these right. And then you do the same on the other side. So coming from these two repeaters aiming into the obsidian, we do a block with redstone. Then we go one block across, two blocks back, two blocks to the edge like that. Fill in the floor. One on three, full, full, two, then three into a block and then four. So when I say four, I mean you click it three times, but it's because the default is one tick of delay. And then when it's on the full delay like this, it does four ticks of delay, which are kind of like seconds in redstone. And OK, the last thing we need to power is these two pistons at the back on the other side. So the way we do that is we put obsidian in front underneath the front one and then a normal block behind the back one. Same on the other side. Then we grab our redstone here. We take two blocks going across and then we do three blocks at the back like this. And that's because we do just redstone aiming into the front one. Then redstone to the back, a repeater on three ticks and more redstone aiming into the back one. And then we just copy that on the other side. So like that. And that should be the door done now. So if we go back to our input on the right side, and we power this repeater going into the block. Then when we turn it off, it should all fold back like that. And then we'll fold it in. So the blocks to cover up your trapdoor would be here. And you just want to make sure it folds away fine even with those blocks. Yep. And we'll close it again. So your floor above will be one block higher than the door. And we'll go around like this. And there you go, that's what it would look like more decorated. So it would fold away like that. Now we're going to use some of that obsidian we got earlier. So what you do is when it's closed like this underneath every slime and honey block, you do obsidian to hide those bits of the redstone. And then also any bit that is going to have these slime and honey blocks pass it needs to be obsidian. So what we do is under this corner, two blocks down we do obsidian and one next to it. Same under this corner. Then one next to it. We do the same on the other side. So under the corner, obsidian, one next to it. Make sure you don't place one here blocking the slime. And then you can just place normal blocks above and below those because these don't interact with any slime or honey. And then you just carry on this the whole way down with some normal blocks like that. And obviously you destroy any blocks you had at the bottom. So you can let someone fall to their doom. Lovely. And now the final fully decorated thing looks a bit like this. There you go, closes up and then closes away and you fell. Congrats. All right, I've been Iden died. Hope you enjoyed that. Check out the other trapdoors if this one's a bit too much for you or if you just need a simpler one. And I'll catch you in the next video. Adios. Also, there should be a download for the structure of this and some of my other builds in the description because I found out I can export the files for structure blocks for Bedrock Edition, but you're going to have to look up a video on structure blocks to know how to import them into your world. But it's just a cool way that you can share builds on Bedrock Edition. So I'll see you in the next one.